Hello everyone. In this video we will be covering the setup of Visual Studio Code on your Windows operating system, as well as the live server extension for VS Code, which enables automatic page refresh after making changes to your HTML, CSS or JavaScript files uh, while doing front-end web development with those technologies. Visual Studio Code is one of the most popular editors nowadays, and even if you already have your favorite code editor, VS Code is definitely worth at least checking out to see what the hype is all about. To start things off, we want to find the Visual Studio Code download page. And to do that, we can just open Google in our browsers. We can type VS Code download. And the first result, so code.visualstudio.com should be the official download page. From there, you can click the Windows download button on the left here and the download should start almost immediately. Then to start the installation, you can just click the downloaded .exe file here. And you can close the browser windows off now. And make sure to carefully read the license agreement terms. And after you did that, you can just click the I accept radio button here and then click next. You can leave the default installation location here and this will install VS Code in your user profile for your operating system. You can click next again. Also, you can leave everything here as default and click next yet again. From this screen, you can create a desktop icon for Visual Studio Code. Also, you can add Open with Code as a menu option when you right-click on files and folders. If you want, you can also register code as an editor for supported file types, for example, to associate it with .html, .css or .js files, etc. You can also leave the Add to Path option selected. and This will enable you to open Visual Studio Code from the terminal with the code command. You can also open files with the code command, so you would do code file name.js for example, and it will open the specified file in the VS Code Editor. After you selected the desired options, you can of course click next again. Finally, when everything is configured, we are ready to install, so we can proceed with clicking the install button here. And we'll just wait until it finishes. From here, we can just leave this checkbox ticked and we can click finish to finalize the installation process. Now it will just automatically open VS Code for us, so here we are. That's basically it, VS Code is now installed on your Windows machine. From here we can click this button on the top left, and then we can click the open folder button here to open a new project folder basically. Since we don't have one, we can create one in our desktop folder for example here. You can just right click with your mouse on the empty space here, you can go to new folder. Then we can give it a name, for example, we can type task-project here, we can press enter, then we can press the select folder button here. Then we can close this welcome tab off, but be sure to use it if you need any help or information for your VS Code editor. So we can just click the X button here. From there, you can see that the task project that we created is located here. So we can just right click and select new file to create a new file for this project. We can name it index.html for example. And let's say we also want to create a CSS file, so we can name it style.css. You can see these files here, so we can go to the HTML file. From there you can just type the exclamation point and then press tab to generate the HTML5 boilerplate. Then we can just quickly write an h1 element. We can basically write anything here, so I'll just write Zarco. And then we can just make a let's say a paragraph below it. I can just write something something useful like make sure subscribe and like the video if you are finding it useful. Then we can just go back here and then add a link tag. So we type link and then press tab and we can just type style.css so we connect it to the CSS file that we made. After making any file changes, be sure to save them. So we can go to file here and then press save, or you can use the control plus S shortcut. I'll just click save here now. From here, we can quickly navigate to the CSS file as well, and then just add a couple of simple styles. So we can just style the body here, or rather select the body. And we can type background dash color, and we can set it to, let's say, uh, light blue. That's nice. We can then navigate below it, select the H1 element, and give it just a color, let's say dark blue here. 
similar you, you want to save the file changes you want to go file save or press ctrl s and now we want to open our html file here and preview it in the browser so to quickly do that you can just right click here and just reveal in file explorer you can double click the index file and then it should just open it up in your browser i'll just resize the window so they look nicer for the video so i split the windows in half here and also i wanted to mention that the vs code editor has the integrated terminal feature and you can just enable it here you can also use the Control plus backtick keyboard shortcut and the backtick would be the button below your escape and above your tab button on the top left of your keyboard so you can just press it here and at the bottom you will see that windows powershell is opened as an integrated terminal window the location will be in your test project and you can type a command like ny which stands for new item in powershell so it's a command that we can use to create a new file we can just type script.js here when we press enter you will see that the new script.js file was also created for our project so we can use the terminal directly from the vs code editor here and now let's talk about the live server extension and what it does for us so for example if i wanted to edit something in the html file here let's say i just add my surname here so I would first need to save the file changes here or I can press Ctrl plus S of course and then I would need to navigate to the browser and actually refresh the page to see the changes. So this is where the live server extension can help us. To install this extension you can press this button here. Then in the search field you can type live server and press enter. The first result here by Ritwik Day is the extension that we're looking for, so you can just press install here. So what this extension does is it that it enables us to run the HTML file on a local server from our VS Code editor. So after it's done installing, you can actually close this tab for the extension here. You can press this button to see our project file structure here again. And since I created this script.js file, I can integrate it also in my html file here i can also open it up and just write a simple console log here just say hello world we can save the file changes i use Control plus s here then we can go back to our html file here we can add the script element to connect it so we can find src the html attribute and then we can specify the javascript file name which is script.js we can press enter or click to auto complete it here make sure to save your file changes again so this white circle here indicates that there are unsaved file changes in this file and you would see it for any other file if there were unsaved changes for those files as well so you can use the Control s key combination or save it from the menu here manually like this then we can go to our browser here then right click on the empty space and press inspect here we can then go to the console you now after we refresh our page you should see that hello world message which comes from our js file here now the live server extension will actually automatically refresh the pages for us when we make some changes so to actually open our html file with the live server extension we can press this go live button here on the bottom then when you press it you may need to allow access for the network because it runs as a server here you can just click the allow access button and now as we can see we're not opening our index.html file from our file system directly but it's being run as a server so basically on our local machine and the port 5500 we navigate back to our first tab you can see that the file was opened directly from our file system here since we don't need it anymore we can just press x to close this tab off and now we are left with this tab where our live server extension runs this index.html file. Now if we make some changes, let's say to the HTML file here, let's say we add something to the h1 title here. And now after we save the file changes, you can see that the page on the right automatically refreshes. so we got the new title here. Of course, if you go to the CSS file and maybe change the color here, let's say light green maybe this time. And you can use Control s to save the file changes and as i save them you can see that the background changed here automatically we open the chrome console again like this and press the console tab here 
and then change something in our script.js file here. For example, we just add a few more exclamation points. We use control s to save the file changes here. We can see that the whole page really quickly refreshed and we see the newest console log message here from the updated JS file. So that's basically it what I had planned for this video. And yeah, if you did enjoy the video, be sure to take a second to click that like button. Your support really means a lot to me, especially now that I'm just starting out. Make sure to also subscribe to see more future content as well. So I have big plans for this channel and I hope you will enjoy it and follow me, follow my work further. Thanks everyone for watching and take care.